Welcome everybody to the Tiny Nimble Podcast, the second podcast of our new podcast style show. I'm Tiny from Tiny Little Games, here with the son of Odin himself, Nimble Thor. Say hi, Nimble. Hey guys. Oh, he did it. <laughs> hey. If you're not subscribed to Nimble Thor, go ahead and do so now. He covers mobile games just like I do, and I'm sure you guys will love it. This is our kind of monthly show. We talk about all things mobile gaming, new releases, industry news, maybe the occasional rant. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to try to get this on all of our all of your favorite podcast apps, um, just to spread the word about the Tiny Nimble podcast. To kick off the show, we're going to do something I like to call What We Recommend. I'm sure I could find a better name for that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going <laughs> to what we're going to do is we're going to pick from one of our favorite videos from the past few videos we've done, or pick a game yes. actually and recommend it to you folks, um, just to see. Hey, give this game a try. I'm going to go ahead and choose Grim Valor. Grim Valor is a premium game, and um, I know premium games are not free to play, of course, but it's a 699 game. However, the first stage of that game is free, or I should say the first area of that game is free, and I think you guys should give it a try. It's like a side-scrolling Castlevania, Metroidvania type game. Um, really cool graphics, and it's definitely worth a try just to play it. If you like it, you can buy it. If not, well, you, then you delete it. Um, yeah, so what do you recommend, Nimble? Game. Yeah, it, well, Grim Valor is absolutely yeah. amazing. Just wanted to say that. It also has Bluetooth support. Uh, it's offline playable, like Bluetooth controller support, yeah, and controller it's offline support, playable. Yep. Um, it's just amazing. Even if you don't play it with a controller, though, it's still a great game. <laughs> yeah, I think an easy recommendation from uh, from both of our sites. But the one I picked, though, is called Floyd's Sticker Squad. And it's not entirely new, but I recently played it just about five days ago, exactly from the time of recording this video. Actually, it's a really fun game. And that's all I'll say. <laughs> no, but it's it's really difficult to explain. It's sort of a bullet hell style game, um, okay. but not in the way you're probably thinking about it. Um, it's impossible to explain, but you should go look it up though. It's really amazing. And it's out both on, both on Android and iOS as well. Yeah, it looks kind of zany. It looks kind of zany too, yeah. the graphics or whatnot. Yeah. The Very graphics colorful. are so weird. The gameplay yeah. is so weird. I've never played anything like it, uh, but it plays really well on mobile. I think it's perfect for, for a smartphone game. Sweet. So um, the biggest thing we want to talk about in this um, podcast is we just had E3 that um, actually, oh, I'm jumping ahead of ourselves, aren't I? Um, let's first and foremost, let's go over our new releases. We have some new releases we want to talk about uh, for um, before we move forward here. Um, first and foremost, I know you're excited for this one, Nimble. It's um, Nonstop yes. Night 2. Yes, and I've played it for about a week now, and I really like it. I know a lot of people don't like idle games, I do tend to like them, at least some of them. Uh, some, I yep. tend to I tend to hate the monetization most of the time, but uh, <laughs> but 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 there's just something enticing about being able to play a game while you're working, I guess. Yeah, and then come back to, to a game and it was yeah. playing while you weren't playing it. Yeah, you yeah. earned some it, coins not, and all that stuff. Exactly. It's not the type of game I like to play actively. When I really sit down sit down for a gaming session, I don't play nonstop night too. Um, but while working, yes, of course. <laughs> Maybe and, that makes me less productive, but I can't help it. It's a great you, game. You played the first nonstop night, yeah? Yeah, I played the first one. Yeah. Uh, what about nonstop I Chuck haven't, Norris? Yes, basically. Yeah. I haven't yet fully made up my mind on the changes I made to the second game. So the first one, I felt like it was more of a just endless fighting sort of game, just in, I see. In, with, with no end. And then at some, some point you reset, if I remember correctly, yeah, yeah, as you yeah. often do in other games. But here mm -hmm. in Nonstop Night 2, they've changed it a bit. So it's more campaign based, I guess. Oh, okay. I haven't really fully made up my mind on that yet, but uh, I'll do a video on it okay. probably next week or the week after. Awesome. I look forward to that video. And of course, everyone who's going to go subscribe, they'll look forward to that video too. <laughs> yes. Uh, have you have you played it yourself, by the way? I have not played Nonstop Night 2 yet. It's on my to-do list for sure. I definitely want to get to it because I actually enjoyed the first one. I'm not a big idol fan either as well. Certain games, when they do it right, I feel like I should commend them for doing it, mm -hmm. you know, good. Um, Nonstop Night being one of them. I actually enjoyed that for being an idol clicker or tapper or, or however we want to, you know, clarify what it is. Yeah. Next up, yeah, we have um, another game called Game of Trenches. What Game of Trenches is, it's basically like a World War II style um, Clash of Clans game. I know a lot of people like Clash of Clans. Actually, some people still play Clash of Clans. Um, I'm not really too big on the base building type games, but I just wanted to mention it for you folks who might be interested in, in maybe playing something with a different feel or look to it. And yeah, then, that's just how we roll here. We can recommend a game we don't yeah, enjoy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we can recommend <laughs> a game, that, game yeah, that we're um, not too big fans of. Yeah, I guess for the people who like those types of games, it, it's nice to see that things are still happening within that genre. 
Yeah, yeah, that those games are still being created for those people who hmm. enjoy it. I mean, I mean, yeah. it, it surprises me that people still play Clash of Clans to this day. I mean, that game must have came out what I don't know, ten yeah. years ago. I mean, actually, I don't yeah. even know when, but it's been well, out I think for it a while. Two thousand thirteen or so, but but yeah, it's it's a long time ago. At, at the very least, six or seven years, I think, at this point. Um, but yeah, yeah. The, the next one is really interesting, though. Uh, the next yeah. the next upcoming game release. The next one, what is it we have? Oh, yeah, it's called Battle Blobs. So Battle Blobs is basically like a four-on-four -four PvP uh, shooter-type game, top-down shooter game. Um, kind of like we've played these type of games before, but this one uses um, goo guns or ink guns, and the graphics actually kind of look like Splatoon, the game from Nintendo, which was the multiplayer game where you shoot out all the ink and splatter everybody. Um, the graphics look pretty good. They actually look top-notch if you guys check it yeah. out. Battle blocks. It's not out yet, though, right? Yeah, I don't think it's fully out because I looked on the uh, no. the Google Play Store and it says it's not available or it's it's not compatible with my device. Um, mm -hmm. However, I, I do got know the same message. Yeah, I do know a lot of listeners are different regions, so if you want to check it out, it's called Battle Blobs. It might might be worth go yeah, yeah going to and go check out to see out, yeah. if it's if it's out yet. Yeah, if uh, if you if you've tried it already though, I guess uh, leaving a comment would be nice. Let let us know what you think about it. I'm really excited personally, by the way, to pay to play Battle Blobs as well. Um, hopefully the monetization is going to be nice. Hopefully it's going to focus on, on cosmetics. I don't expect it, but I yeah. hope so. All we can yeah. do as, as free to play mobile gamers is hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is hope for that. Uh, oh, yeah. another new release we have is Dawn of Isles. It's an MMO, um, RPG that I actually did a video for, and I really commend it for its graphical style. It's almost like a, I want to say like a Disney Pixar type animation graphics, um, and the one thing I did like about Dawn of Isles is it doesn't have auto autoplay features when it comes to the combat. So, of course, you auto run to your quest and all that stuff. Mm. But when it comes to actually fighting and battling, you choose your attacks. You choose where to move and how to fight. Um, and it's funny that I'm congratulating a game for doing that. But <laughs> it's 2019 <laughs> and auto yep. is everything. So I actually liked Dawn of Isles for that. Yeah. Did you, I, did you play it? it. Yeah, I, played, I played it a little bit, like yeah. maybe an hour and a half or so. I got through the tutorial, which was somewhat long. Um, yeah. Yeah, but played through that, got a tiny bit into the game, uh, but then I had to stop playing, and then I didn't really play it for the past few days. But uh, I do want to do a video on it, though. I, I want to cover cover that game thoroughly. So I'm really looking forward to getting into it. I, I love MMORPGs, and this is just the newest one on the block, and yeah. you know, seems seems pretty solid so far. I'm, I'm but, glad that uh, you're, you're 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 tackling it that way too because I, it, it's a pretty huge game and so when I played it it, it was more of like an impression but there's a bunch of mechanics in there with when it comes to building and crafting your stuff and building up your island and all that stuff. Yeah, when I come out with a video on it, it's, it's uh, <laughs> the game is probably irrelevant <laughs> at that <laughs> yeah. point in time. But, yeah, but we'll see. But it's still good yeah. to see um, different perspectives on it, you know, to see yeah. what your thoughts of it or whatnot. Because yeah. sometimes I like a game and sometimes you don't or vice versa, you know. So I like to always bounce ideas off of each other like that. Mm. Yeah. All right. That's always and interesting. So coming up next, we have some big news. And this isn't E3 news yet. We're getting there, folks. Don't worry. This is and big Stadia. Yeah. Very and, soon. Oh, and Google Stadia. Yeah. We got a lot of thoughts on that. Um, this yeah. is some big news on the Nimblethor camp. Nimblethor actually got a new phone recently, and I kind of was interested to hear about that. Yes, yeah, so I, I was due for an upgrade because for some reason, uh, I used to use, for those of you who don't know, I used to play and record on a Samsung Galaxy S8, S8 Plus, uh, which is still a great phone, by the way. I could definitely keep using it for, at the very least, another year, I think. But... I was using MobiSend for Samsung to record my, my gameplay footage because that was the only app that allowed me to record internal audio as well uh, without sacrificing the overall quality of, of the recording. And apparently Samsung has forced MobiSend to remove that feature now. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah, so I was basically, <laughs> that threw me off a bit there. I was kind of, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna get a new phone now. And so I had to start start looking for other phones and see if I could sell my, my Samsung Galaxy S, uh, S8 to get some of that money back. But I found the OnePlus 7 Pro, and it's amazing. I ended up buying it, needless to say, because it allows me to actually record internal audio that's built directly into uh, OnePlus's version of Android. And it also allows me to actually listen to the gameplay, listen to the audio in my headset at the same time of, uh, as well. Now, of course, I do have to do that in a Bluetooth headset because there's no audio jack. Why do they keep doing that? I, yep, that's the new oh, thing. Man. It's no a new audio, thing, but I, yeah. I like my audio jack, though. 
But uh, but yeah, it's a big advantage that I can now you know listen while I play. I couldn't do that before, so I'm liking it. It's silky smooth. Um, it was cheaper, by the way, than the new Samsung uh, Samsung you know, top notch phones out there, the their flagship phones. Uh, the Galaxy and, Ten, I think, is the new yeah, flagship. Yeah, for example. Right? Yeah, yeah, and it has the same, or in some cases even better specs. Uh, you know, you've got a, a 90 hertz um, screen in there. It's a beautiful screen, 12 gigabyte of RAM as well, plenty of RAM, and, uh, and two, 256 gigabyte of storage. So I have room for all my Dawn of Isles and, and other huge MMORPG games on my phone. Uh, the aspect ratio is a bit weird. It's 19.5 to 9. So it's really. Yeah, it's a little different. Yeah, it's a little different. But uh, the games that do support that, though, they, they look absolutely amazing on this screen. So for me as a mobile gamer, I use my phone a lot, right? I use it every single day. I use it a lot every single day. And I just, I, I, I want to have something that, that plays nicely with a screen that looks great. But, but that's about it. I don't care too much about the camera. The camera is fine in the OnePlus, by the way. Um, but I don't care as much about that. It, for me, it's mostly just about, can this game, or sorry, can this phone actually run the games I want to play? And uh, do I believe it can also do that in, in two years from now, from now? So I don't have to buy a new one. Exactly. Um, you want to fu- yeah. f- future-proof your phone or future-proof what you I want to future-proof doing. it a bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, quick, I uh, just want to do a quick side note. This video is not sponsored by OnePlus. Just... Oh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> if Although only, sounds, guys. Yeah, if <laughs> only it was. I have a if question only... on the, the, the aspect ratio. So if a game doesn't support it, are you playing with, like, black bars on the sides? Yes, that would be yeah, black I bars figured, on the sides. Yeah. Again. Yeah. How does that look when um, you re- when you record it though? Do you, or like when you put it on to your uh, what is it editing software? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So do you still it, see them? Um, or? It records. Yes, it records oh, okay. the whole screen, and then I just crop that off. Oh, okay, okay. Um, That's a good workaround. It's fine. It's fine. I, I think it's a great phone for any uh, content creator out there, anyone looking to get into recording mobile gameplay. I think this is a a great a great phone you don't have to get the 12 gigabyte version even you could go for the 8 gigabyte one and, and save some money i think that's depending on your region uh it might be you know 50 or maybe even 100 us dollars off if you do that somewhere within that range so you do save quite some money and uh, if you're just getting into it i think this is actually a you know, a, a really great phone it's funny that you bring up recording your um, in-game audio because at this point I can't do that either on my phone because Android doesn't allow that. Um, oh, there's, wow. there's rumors out there that Android is going to be their new update they're going to release is going to allow apps to start doing that now. So apparently, oh, really? yeah, apparently Android Q is that what they're calling it or something mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, I was reading a, a update on it saying that they're going to actually implement that. So I'm wondering if that's why. Moby Zen took it off because Android said you have to take it off because we're going to implement it or something. But I'm curious mm. to see what happens there. Could be it. Yeah, I don't know. I guess for for our iPhone users out there, I don't I don't have a whole chat. I don't even know how recording works, but uh, I think it's a bit easier though. So just to be absolutely fair, um, I think it works better on an iPhone actually. I think all iPhones can record uh, internal audio. It, they're internal just putting audio. that out there. Yep. Just yeah. yep. It's an Android thing. Yeah, might have just pissed off some some hardcore Android fans. <laughs> yeah. But listen, yeah. listen though, I want to get into the E3 stuff. There's so there's so much great news from from E3 this year, uh, and Google Stadia we have to get to as well, and we have to get into uh, yeah, more new segments coming later on as well. So I think maybe um, maybe we could move on to some of the new games that were you know announced at E3 this year, mobile games specifically. And I know that the first one, Command Akeen, is something you mentioned that. You played the original one of actually. You played the original yep. Commander Keen game back in the day. I, I am old enough, I have to admit, to play the original Commander Keen on PC. This game was released probably what late 80s, I think, probably early 90s, um, and it was the PC's answer to like, oh, we have platformers too. Um, so it was basically just a side-scrolling platformer. You played as a little kid who wore a helmet. You jumped around. You bounced on enemies. You shot enemies. Um, it was cool for its time. I really, I actually really enjoyed it when I was a kid. Um, but now we're getting a free-to-play mobile version of Commander Keen, and everybody rejoice and be excited because it's <laughs> not what you think it is. <laughs> I, I was just I, about to say, are you excited yeah. though? <laughs> I was expecting it to be a uh, what is it like a side-scrolling endless run or something in something similar to what is it Super Mario Run? Uh, yeah, because yeah. I just think it would translate perfectly well like that. But apparently, it's supposed to be kind of like a card collecting PvP type. Um, game of, of sorts. They haven't revealed too much of the gameplay, but it's definitely mm. not what I was expecting it to be. Um, so there's probably, that. Yeah, the monetization is probably not what you hope for either. Just throwing that out there. This is purely speculation, but I just yeah. 
I think we see that quite often with um, with old IPs or popular IPs moving to mobile, and they tend to be monetized somewhat heavily unless they are unless they are some of the most valuable IPs, right? So you might not see that with, with certain IPs, but Commander Keen, I think, is yes, is one of those games where there's lots of people who played it back in the day, but it's not as popular as you know, Mario or exactly uh, or Pokemon, yeah. for example. I mean, to a so, lot of people, this is a new game yeah. to them; they never even heard exactly. of Commander Keen. Yeah. 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 So next anyway, up, we'll next see. up, yeah, we're moving on to Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is going to be getting a uh, port onto mobile. So Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles was a RPG game released probably, I think, yeah, back in 2004 or five for the GameCube. Um, basically, it's a Final Fantasy game type game. If any of you have played Final Fantasy, and now we're bringing it over to have. mobile. We all have, right? Have we though? Have we all played <laughs> Final Fantasy? Shut I up. I, 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 okay, listen. I, I, let, let, let's get I to that. I should never have told you. Yeah, I should let's never get have told to that. You. Okay. I, guys, I, I've never played a Final Fantasy game. He's never. I'm you, sorry. You hear that? He's never played a Final Fantasy game. I've never played one on mobile. I've never played one on any console anywhere. It's oh. out there. So I'm yeah. curious as to why, though. Why have you never played a Final Fantasy game? I do not know. I think for the longest time, because I, I and we'll get into this later on in the podcast, but but I I had some bad experiences with premium games back in the early days of mobile gaming and seeing as most Final Fantasy games are premium games and they're, you know, within the more expensive, you know, range of premium mobile games they as well, at least are, most, yes. most of them. I I just guess I kind of expect that I'm going to be disappointed as well. I, I, I don't know, but but I know everyone likes them so much, right? And I love RPG RPG games. I love the fantasy setting of these games. I don't know what it is. I just I never really got you know got playing any of them. Um, I hate, I I hate to play... do this to you, but I think your exact yeah. words were quote unquote they look boring. Well, <laughs> oh man, all right, yes, I said that. Why <laughs> why did you put me through this? I I did say that. Um, okay. Let me try to explain. Which, which is understandable when you take when you take so, it at face value and you look at it. I can get it. I get what you're saying. I look at them. <laughs> I look at them, and I look at what other, <laughs> I look at what other mobile games are out there, and I look at the, I look at the graphics. I look at the UI, especially the UI, and I think yeah. this is pretty bad UI. And and I and and I shouldn't do that because the game is probably amazing. I know everyone seems to love those games. Um, but but that is that is the truth though. Like I look at it and I think, hey, am I gonna pay however much it is? Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever, fifteen. Sometimes US dollars they're for fifteen. This. Sometimes they're fifteen dollars for the final yeah, fantasy 15, ones. Yeah, yeah. US dollars. Uh, and I guess the decision was just no. <laughs> yeah, but I, th- I, I, I yeah. I, I think it's a nostalgia thing too, though. I played Final Fantasy back when I was younger, and I fell in love with the series. Um, but as a newcomer, if you just kind of like play a Final Fantasy game without ever playing one, maybe I can see where you're coming from because it's more of a oh, when I was a kid, this reminds me of when I was a kid type of thing, as opposed to now we're adults. And but actually, <laughs> it's a little that's different. That's perfect. I should do that. I, I should play the game and give sort of a this is someone who's never played a Final Fantasy. There game you go. Before. This is my impression of, of these of these games. But it's actually not completely true. I only now remembered I did actually play that free uh, or at least free to try uh, mobile Final Fantasy game. It was in a oh, way different style. The, the Final Fantasy 15, I think. The, um, yeah, the latest the one they idea. released, they ported it to mobile. Is that what you're thinking? Mm, not too sure. The graphics were very different from, from all the other fa- Final Fantasy games. Um, I forgot what it's called, but anyway, I I think I did play one, but it's not really considered one of the classic Final Fantasy games. Yeah, the classic so. old school turn based Final Fantasy. But anyway, fi- Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles uh, is coming to mobile. It as is you coming. Were saying. To that mobile. was announced at E as well. Yeah. So yeah, I guess you know that's something that people can get excited about. Oh, here's another one that everyone can get excited about too. Gears Pop. Yay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So Gears Pop is <laughs> or not? Base, yeah, Gears Pop is basically um, everyone familiar with Gears of War from Xbox. They're basically bringing mm-hmm. their own mobile game to mobile um, called Gears Pop, and what it is is it's you basically play as um, Funko Pop figures of the Gears of War from the Gears of War franchise. And I I heard rumblings of this this game at last E3. They showed like a little teaser trailer. Well, this E3 they showed some gameplay footage, and boy was I disappointed. I was expecting it to be um, almost like a Gears of War type, you know, third-person shooter with duck and cover mechanics. 
um, almost like Hero Hunters, if anyone has played Hero Hunters in the past. Ah, yes. Yeah, something similar to that, because that game is based off of Gears of War mechanics. But no, this is a Clash Royale-style um, PvP-type, uh, what is because it? Because of course it Battle is. Battle Royale. Of yeah, of course, because, yeah. <laughs> because it's 2019. <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? So exactly. it's, based, it's kind of like that, which for some might be really excited for that. If you're a Gears fan, if you're a Clash Royale fan, I get it. Uh, I was just expecting it to be so different, and it's not what I expected. Yeah. So you know, our our podcast will never get a sponsor ever. We're sitting here dishing <laughs> dishing everyone out there. <laughs> We're not getting one from Xbox. We're not well, getting well, well maybe one wah, plus. Wah. Well, <laughs> maybe yeah, one maybe one plus. plus. <laughs> um i yeah i mean i don't know e3 was you know had some disappointments this year i guess i agree uh, a little lackluster at, at, yeah it was kind of lackluster T tom clancy's though tom clancy's elite squad it's another that, one that's that was the announced. next game yeah that's um, another one that was announced do you have some thoughts on that um i am familiar with the tom clancy franchise i've played a lot of tom clancy games and again this is another game for you know that's a little bit different than what it is on consoles or pc it's like what is it a pvp tactical type shooter with gotcha mm. mechanics uh i don't know how that's gonna go what are your thoughts on that yeah i don't know either i i think yeah. it's probably gonna be bad i i have a feeling and this is just sort of a, a hunch i can't obviously really know i haven't seen too much of the gameplay even but i do feel like this is just a cash grab but that's unfair to say probably because i haven't played it yet but it just it's such a huge brand and they're bringing it to mobile and i'm maybe a bit pessimistic like i i think they're just trying to earn more money but hopefully the gameplay is good as well. And in that case, it's okay to earn more money. But yeah. if you're just doing it just just to grab money from Tom Clancy fans, then I feel that, that that's kind of unfair. That That's not how you should do business. And that's kind um, of the trend that I, I see that's been going on lately. You have these big developers who are bringing their IPs to mobile and you yes. know they're gonna they're gonna do crazy monetization. I mean, Elder Scrolls Blades was an example of, of the way they, they could bring these IPs over. And it's just a trend that I see continuing, and I, I don't. I'm not very. I wouldn't say I'm. I, I'm just disappointed in it. I guess I could say. Mm. No, I I completely agree. It 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 very rarely ever works out in a nice way for us consumers and for us gamers. Sadly. Yep. What about the last one though? I, oh, I the last big. I announcement. remember you talked about one more. Yeah. Yep. The last big game announcement from E3 that I know Nimble Thor is excited for is War of Visions. <laughs> Final Fantasy Brave Exodus. Another Final Fantasy game. <laughs> we have two Final Hooray. Fantasy games, yeah. So Final Fantasy Brave Exodus, for those who don't remember, a few years back it was released. It was a top-down, old-school-looking Final Fantasy game that actually played very well, and there was a lot of good reviews for that that game. So this is the sequel to Brave Exodus called War of Visions. This one is completely free-to-play, built for mobile, so it's not a port or anything of older Final Fantasy games. Um, did you, you never played, well, you didn't play any Final Fantasy, but you didn't play Brave Exodus, did you, Nimble? Nope. Yeah, the original, so yeah, this <laughs> is the so sequel. Much to, I have so much to add to this conversation, it's just basically no, I didn't. So, the um, Brave Exodus was actually the second game I ever reviewed on my channel, can you believe that? Oh, wow. The original, oh, yeah, wow. the original Brave Exodus I reviewed, and I, I actually really loved it for its, its old school, original looking Final Fantasy look. And it's um, combat. It had like a turn-based combat feel to it. It was really nice. So I'm kind of excited for this one more so than I would say the $15 or what is it, Final Fantasy Chronicles that they are going to mm. release. So I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll keep an eye on that. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe that's the one I should check out as well then. Yeah, I if, think if any of them. Yeah, you might go want to go back and check out Brave Exodus and see what you think of it. Yeah, I don't think there was there was barely any news on when exactly these games would be releasing. Isn't that right? We, we don't have any true. solid. Yeah, set in, stay, set in stone dates. And I think that's... We talked about this earlier when what we call the pre-show. We have a pre-show, everybody. Um, Ooh. And it's one of those things where it's like... That's the thing with mobile gaming. They don't really give you... Uh, an, uh, what is it? Release dates. They don't say, oh, coming, you know, June, whatever, or whatnot. Sometimes they'll say release, like, second quarter or third quarter, like that. Mm. But they don't give us release dates on these games, which I wish they would, honestly. Get us excited. Yeah. For a certain yeah. Typically, time. they just say so. If I had to explain mobile gaming, uh, mobile game releases more precisely, it would basically be something like along the lines of, "Well, we're gonna release a new game. It's coming out in 2019." You know, then a few months come go by, and and you hear, "Well, it is gonna come out before the end of 2019, right?" You know, yeah. maybe Q4, <laughs> and then nothing happens Q4, <laughs> and then in December it's uh, it, it's a new update of, "Well, we're gonna have to push it." till 2020 and yes durango i'm looking at you durango oh, yes. that game 
<laughs> that game, I, so if you go back on my channel, I, I actually did a video on that game two years ago. Two Holy years moly. ago, and it and it only just released just very recently. Two yeah, that, years. That's crazy. Two years ago. In beta testing. Yeah. I. Uh, you know, it's yeah. funny you say that because I did a video a while back too. I don't think it was two years, but it was probably like maybe a year back. Yeah. And I almost forgot that that game existed until it finally released. I'm like, oh, yeah, Durango. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember and that's that the thing, game. Right? Is, it, is it even relevant anymore? But exactly. that's, I guess, a discussion for another day. But yeah. So but, yeah, more rants about, about game releases. But listen, though, guys, it's not all ranting. But because here's something I am so insanely excited about. Words cannot describe how happy I am when, when I saw this announcement. We talked about it on the last show. And I'm gonna I'm gonna explain what it is. But we talked <laughs> about it on the last show as well. We uh, we talked about what our expectations for it were, and we have more info. And of course, everyone knows about this already. But of course, we're gonna talk about it as well. It's Google Stadia. Google Hooray! Stadia. Basically, Google Stadia. Very quick rundown. Streaming service from Google. We now have new information on the pricing of it. It's, it's basically all about streaming video games to your computer, to your smartphones, even, which is why we're talking about it here on this podcast, but uh, the, the quick version is $9.99, 10 US dollars per month, is gonna give you the pro version, which is gonna allow you to stream games in 4K resolution, 5.1 surround sound, uh, all the good stuff, basically. And for that, you pay 10 US dollars. So this doesn't give you, well, it does give you, I think it gives you one game, and maybe they're gonna add a few more games to it down the line, but it's mostly just for having access to Google's hardware basically that's the way i see it at least that's what you're paying for you're paying for the 4k resolution you're paying for well basically not having to go out and buy a great gaming pc yourself because you can stream this to pretty much anything you can even stream it to your chromecast that might be hooked into your into yep. your chromecast, your phone uh, which your excites TV, me right? your phone exactly you know, yeah, yeah. Your, your phone as well uh, but this is where i got really excited they have a free version as well and it's, it's free forever like you, they have a free version where it's 1080p 60 frames per second uh, you don't get the 5.1 surround sound, you don't get the 4K resolution, but you can stream at full full HD, 60 frames per second, for free, and you just have to buy the individual games that you want to play at any point in time. And that that really excites me. Uh, this was basically everything I was hoping for. It, it surprised me as well, because I'm guessing Google just don't want to make money, or, or maybe they're just so hungry for market share uh, that... And, and that's probably it, right? They're so hungry for market share that they wanna they wanna get more users before eventually Microsoft, Sony, you know, Xbox, I guess is Microsoft, but all these other companies out there, Apple, right? All of them are launching game streaming services, and I guess Google wanna wanna get the most users before the competition arrives. Yeah, I feel that's like that's my Google, take on it. Yeah, Google's getting their foot in the door probably sooner than the other ones because the other companies have been talking about it, but Google's the one that's just been pushing it, and. Yeah. I have my reservations on the monthly service of paying $9.99, but yes, I agree. The free service at 1080p at 60 frames per second is pretty awesome. I mean, I can play Assassin's Creed Odyssey on my phone on my lunch break or something, which is so cool. Um, and when you were talking about like, you know, what money can they get from providing the free service? I th I'm pretty sure they take a little bit of the funds of the games that get sold. So like if you buy Assassin's Creed Odyssey, let's see, I'm sure Google will get a little kickback for that. So, I mean, either way, they're probably going to be making some money off of it, but I am re I, I'm really excited as well for the, the, the free version. Cause I was expecting mm. it to be paid no matter what. Yeah. I was under the impression at first that it's like, oh yeah, ten dollars a month or fifteen dollars a month for just to have this service. So to have a free version actually kind of excites me too. I was pessimistic yeah, at first, but I gotta say I'm a little getting a little on the happy side now. Maybe you just listen to too much of my propaganda again. <laughs> not even paid by Google <laughs> Stadia, but it really me. should be. I could, <laughs> well, I I could sell Google Stadia all day long. I haven't even tried it yet, right? So of course I have some reservations as well about how well it actually plays and the internet connection speeds and 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 the delays and and all that stuff. But from the information we have so far, I'm just really excited. I think Google is doing the right thing here, making it free also allows someone like me who I don't play PC games very often, right? Very very rarely. I play mobile games all the time, PC games nearly never at any point uh or, or at this point. So two things are going to happen. Now that I can actually soon stream it to my smartphone and already later this year, I think, stream it to my PC from Google servers, what's going to happen is I'm not limited anymore by not having a great gaming PC. Yep. I, I, can, I can actually play these games. I can even play them on my phone. So I can even be outside and I can play these games, assuming, well, you know, that at least 5, 5G is probably around by, by that time. 
Um, and so if I have a good 5G connection, that that's something that's then possible. And even looking in a couple of years into the future, certainly it will be possible. Um, it's just a matter of, of these new technologies arriving. I, I did hear your point though uh, about the data usage. This is something yeah, you brought up. I do have a I do have my own reservations when it comes to um, the data usage usage, and this is coming from me because I'm over here in the states, and in the states mm -hmm. we have data caps on all of our internet. So, for example, I have a one terabyte um, data cap, so I can't use more than one terabyte of um, download or up or downloads. Um, in a month let's say when i reach that my internet gets slowed down or it might even stop i've never reached my one terabyte which is fine but according to some people um who've done some research when it comes to you know how much de data gets used in the with google stadia one terabyte of data will be used with 65 hours of gaming and i know that yeah. sounds like a lot of gaming um to be doing but a lot of gamers especially hardcore gamers probably spend up to maybe close to 65 or an hour a month mm -hmm. in gaming however we have to understand that it doesn't matter if you're spending 65 hours gaming because you might spend two hours on um netflix you might yes. spend an hour you know surfing the yep. web you might download something else a movie or something along the line so that eats it up as well as opposed to what you're coming so my only concern is with data caps i have a um mm -hmm. i'm a little worried about how that goes now that one terabyte i want to say is with 4k streaming so i guess yeah, i think that's important to mention yeah I think exactly at, at 1080p you could probably uh, squeeze more out at, of it at, yeah at the very least double that i'm pretty yep. sure yeah um, because 4, 4k just takes up so much so much more bandwidth bandwidth there's some more much more data that has to go back and forth between google servers and your pc or smartphone at any given time um but it is a good point, though. It is a good point. I think it's something I didn't personally think too much about because here, here in Denmark, where I live, and I, I do think in most of Europe, actually, there are no limits. Like, there are no data caps. We That's can use nice. a 1,000 terabytes if yeah. we wanted to. Um, so over here, it's not an, an issue. I think in the U.S., in the States, it's probably going to be an issue for some people, as you mentioned, especially if they want to go for that 4K, 4K version. But the way I, I look at it is basically I, I, I don't have to buy a gaming PC. I can just pay for the games, and that's going to easily save me. You know, how much does a gaming PC cost here in Europe? I know it's actually a bit cheaper in the US. Here in Europe, I could easily spend fifteen hundred dollars on a on a on a good gaming on a good gaming setup, right? Um, yeah, that's about average. I mean, fifteen hundred dollars would yeah. get you a decent setup, but if you want like the top tier, like top oh, of the yeah, line, of oh, we're talking like three thousand yes. dollars for you yes, know, yes, yes. A top much, tier PC. Much more, but I was being a bit more like for fifteen hundred dollars, I could probably get something that's okay ish. Uh, for gaming, I'm not getting the best out there. That's definitely true. Um, but but that's fifteen hundred dollars that I've now saved, right? I, yeah. With Google Stadia, and I can spend that on video games instead. And for fifteen hundred dollars, I probably wouldn't be able to play 4K uh, anyway. Exactly. So yeah. I'd probably true. be stuck at 1080p anyway. So for me, as a more casual PC gamer or a very casual PC gamer. This is going to be this is going to be perfect. I think they did absolutely the right thing uh, thing and when they went uh, free. It's funny that you brought that up for you as like, you know, being a, a casual or for something with the Google Stadia. I think it's good to let to, to let you guys know that it is for a specific market. It is for mm. certain gamers for, you know, a certain I don't want to say lifestyle, but a certain like, you know, people, how they go about doing their gaming. And for those folks, it's I think it's great. Yeah, if you're mm. a type of person who just wants to get into um, PC gaming or just wants to, you know, play games on the go or something along those, um, this is great. I mean, especially because now that there's a free version of it. I mean, 1080p yeah. does not look horrible. People think, oh, you know, 4K is the best, this and that. Sure it is, but I mean, I can game at 1080p 60 frames and be content, yeah. you know? Exactly. Same here. But I think uh, if I had to made a, make a point to really try to drive this home and also turning it back to to focus on mobile gaming, my argument would be, you know, Diablo is going to be, be releasing on mobile, right? The mobile version very soon. Yep. Lots of people Diablo hated that. Immortal, yeah. Um, exactly. Or, or hated the idea of that. But say it is really as horrible as you think it's going to be. Isn't it kind of nice that we're now moving into the future, a future where you can actually play the original Diablo game. Well, I'm not talking about the old one, but like the the, the, the PC Diablo game, the, the new Diablo PC 3. Diablo game. Yeah, Diablo 3 or Diablo 4 that. when if it, when it's ever released. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Diablo 4 on your smartphone streaming from Google servers. So you can still be on your smartphone. You can still get, get to play Diablo, but you don't have to play the mobile version. You can actually play the full version. I think that's what really drives it home for me. That's what gets me really excited is being able to play some of these uh, premium 
previously you know console and pc exclusive games and i can now very very soon play them on my smartphone um that that's exciting you you did also bring up a few a few other things that that we still have to see how they're going to handle like for yeah. example if connected to a server and that server crashes for example it does happen i know google is managing it i know they manage servers all around the world but they do crash sometimes so what happens if that you know if that happens do i get disconnected do i have to wait do i automatically reconnect to a different server uh, and i can you know continue playing my game within just a minute or two of what happens is you know i guess it's the question and that could become a frustration if that happens too often yeah, I think that's a good point too. Though I, I am curious to see, especially when you said that, oh, do I automatically collect, con- connect to a different server? Um, that would be actually it would be a good way of supplementing that, or, or a good way of saying, hey guys, listen, if there's ever issues or whatnot, you get connected, like you said, within a minute or something. And I think, especially for people who are like, okay, they can kind of be, get get with that, let's say. But if it's mm. just down completely and then you can't game, well, then yeah, you might have some issues there. Um, yeah, that's talking, horrible. I, yeah, that's I know the that Netflix. Part. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I know. I know that Netflix has a system actually where they, they, because Netflix is the king of streaming, right? Like, let's let's get real here. Netflix yeah, is the king dominant. Of, um, and I know YouTube has, you know, Google has YouTube, and they've been doing that for for a long time. But 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 Netflix has been doing that in the traditional movie industry, and and Netflix, what they do, this is so interesting. I learned this recently. Netflix, what they're doing is they are they actually have a program that automatically destroys their own hardware servers at random. Oh. It will just destroy oh, wow. random random of their servers. And the reason for that is that it pushes the developers to make be- better code uh, and make sure that uh, at any given point in time, someone connecting from a smartphone or from a TV or from a PC to a Netflix server, even if literally the, the hardware crashes completely or the hardware gets destroyed, right? It explodes. Even if that happens, the user won't even notice it. You will just automatically start streaming, continue streaming from from a different from a different uh, from a different server. And I I feel like if Netflix can do that, Google might be able to do that as well. Maybe yeah. not from the from the beginning, but they should definitely be able to do that uh, within a few years. I, I guess I don't see why not if, if Netflix can do it. My only other concern with the um, with Google Stadia is the fact that we don't actually own the games. I mean, you can mm-hmm. make an argument that oh yeah, you do. But when I'm when I'm playing a game on my PC and I download it to my hard drive, I consider that me owning it. So if my internet goes out or something or something's wrong with the internet, I can potentially still play that game. I mean, unless there's DRM stuff That's or true. something, you know, stopping it. And with Google Stadia, you're not going to really have that option. If the servers are down completely, then you're just down playing the game. But like you said, I feel like they're probably going to have um, a safety net for certain scenarios. Like what you just explained right now is really interesting. And if anybody can do that, I'm sure Google can do that. I mean, Netflix mm. is doing it. I'm sure Google has the capability of doing something like that. Yeah. I'm pretty excited. I think that's <laughs> that's the conclusion here. Pretty on excited. A, on a scale Stadia. from 1 to 10, how excited from, are you? I, I'm 11. Oh, oh, wow. That's pretty. I'll, get, I'll say I'm a 8. I'm going to say an 8. I think you're more realistic. Good. I, yeah, I'm, I yeah. think you're right. <laughs> I, 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 I want to wait right. and see. Yeah, I want to wait and yeah. see, but... I think we will definitely be talking more about Google Stadia when it's actually out. Um, Honestly, I can see me doing a video about it or even you doing a video about the free version and just testing out some games to see how it plays and all that good stuff. Yeah, we'd love to do the same here. Um, Especially, I know from the beginning, it's only going to be able to stream to Google's own Pixel smartphones. But they did mention and they did make it very, very clear that that's just because that's when they're just rolling it out. It will be possible to stream to to all smartphone devices. Google's idea for Stadia is basically they want to allow you to play these games on any screen, and that's how they put it. So it doesn't matter if it's an iPhone, doesn't matter if it's an Android, doesn't matter what operating system you're running. If there is a screen, it should be able to stream Stadia games. It's that's, the future. It's the future, the future of gaming. Yeah. And talking about the future, by the way, quick segue here. Call of Duty Mobile coming really soon. It's it's the one made by Tencent. And it's gonna it's soft launched in India and, and Australia so far. We talked about this in the pre-show as well, but you're really excited for that. I think I'm, I'm really, really excited t- for it as I, well. I, I, I'm 11 out of 10 on this one. You're 11 <laughs> out of 10 on the Call of Duty. I'm 11 out of 10 because I I recently watched your video that you did on it when you were playing. I think like a soft launch or a beta version mm-hmm. of it. And oh man, it looks like classic Call of Duty just on mobile. I mean, the nostalgia factor there of the old Modern Warfare maps, the way the movements are. Uh, it looks it looks awesome. I'm super excited. 
I just yeah. wish I lived in I, Australia so I could play it. Yeah, because <laughs> exactly. I think it's soft I think you might actually there. be able to. I think you might actually be able to download an uh, sort of an APK version or something like that. Um, it's weird because I try. I tried out the other okay, day. It's funny right. you say that. I tried. I went onto my my good old APK site, which I won't say here, um, and hmm. I tried to download it. And it, for some reason, it's all this link is no longer active. So I was like, oh well, man. So I guess yeah, I got to patiently wait. Again, it should be coming really soon. I did play it, as you said. I did play it back in. I think it was January or February this year. And it, it, it played amazing. As you said, like the, the old maps are there from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Uh, they look exactly the same as they did back then. The movement, the controls, everything feels really great. If, if you played PUBG Mobile, you, you'll you get sort of the same very polished experience in Call of Duty, except it's Call of Duty, which means I like it way more. <laughs> I played I played Call of Duty a lot back in, uh, back in my PC gaming days. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it releasing on mobile as well. So it should be coming to, to both Android and, and iOS devices uh, somewhat soon. It would surprise me. We don't have a date, but it would surprise me uh, if it, it would surprise me if it doesn't. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It would surprise me if it does not release, though, within the next, I'm going to make a guess here, within the next three or four months. That would greatly yeah, I, surprise I could, me. I could I, see that yeah. as a as a reasonable time frame. Yeah. During summer, this summer, it is going to release, I think. Yeah, and I'm curious to see how the monetization is as well. I think you brought up a point about, you know, cosmetic monetization, which mm-hmm. which would be perfect in a game like this. Just make it be cosmetic. I can paint my gun. I can change yeah. my, you know, my look of my character. Because um, the, the biggest fear when it comes to online only um, free-to-play games is, is it pay to win, right? Is it, of course. you know, oh, you buy this for this super-duper gun, you know, that's going <laughs> to demolish people in one shot or something like that. Yeah. But if they keep it a cosmetic like that, I think we have a potential for a really good Call of Duty port. And yeah, I mean, and I mean, it's Tencent. It's Tencent, and, and Tencent is known for making games that uh, that monetize purely through cosmetics. So, mm-hmm. I, so I have pretty high hopes for, yeah, for Tencent, that, actually. Yeah, Tencent's yeah. taken over. They they truly yeah. are. Whether for that, the, that, for that the better or the worse. I know, for the yeah, better that, or the worse. <laughs> that part I'm scared about. Yeah, but at least they, they do make... They, yeah, they yeah, tend they to make, make great games. Well, they tend to make... Honestly, they tend to make quality mobile games. I must, You know, they tend to do really good ports when they come over, and they tend to, you know, very entertaining. So I'm kind of excited. Yeah. I mean, they... Yeah, I'm kind of excited for it. Yeah. But listen, we have a new format. We, we asked you guys if you had any ideas for any sort of segments we should add to the podcast. And we got so many, by the way, so thanks a lot for that. Lots of great comments. I uh, really enjoyed reading those. Uh, I'm sorry we, we you guys had to wait two months before the next episode, <laughs> but but here we are. Uh, and uh, and we wanted to include one of those ideas you guys had, which um, it was this idea of adding a mobile gaming throwback segment where we talk about one or two or three games that you know we played back when we first started getting into mobile games. And I thought that was just... It was just such an interesting idea, and and you even brought it up as well, Tanya. It, it was your, I think, one of your favorite ideas of the suggestions we got uh, in yep. the comments last, yep. uh, last I like time. The, I like the idea of us going back and saying, like, when we first started mobile gaming, what was the game that got us into it, or what yes. was what is our fondest memories? And there's a bunch of games we can talk about, but of course, for this segment, we're probably just going to talk about a few of them to get started. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess I'll get started. So when I first started mobile gaming, I played on an iPhone and I forget which one it was. I don't know if it was like the 3G or the, I forget how they named them back then. Um, it was kind of weird. In the yeah, it was a weird naming, but it was basically a brick with the screen on it. <laughs> yeah. And that was my first mobile gaming experience. So I, after a while, I didn't, when I first got it, I wasn't even actually mobile gaming. I was big on console gaming. I think I had a PS3 at the time, maybe. Yeah. And I really didn't download any games. So when I finally downloaded a, downloaded a game for it, it was called Zuma. Zuma something revenge or something like that. So this was actually a game that was on consoles. It was like a puzzle type game. And mm-hmm. they just released it for iPhone and everyone was supposed to be excited for it. And I want to say it was 99 cents. This is back in the day when like all games were 99 cents. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Free to, <laughs> free to play wasn't like the biggest thing back uh, back then. As Certainly it is wasn't. Now. And nope. it was basically, if anybody's familiar with uh, Bubble Pop or, or, or any of those mm. games where you pull your finger back and you release it and then you hit things and you have to match the colors with them, it was similar to that. But in this game, it was a little frog in the middle. And, and I'm sure as I'm explaining it, people are going to remember about it. A little frog in the middle and you, you, you release the little, the what is it? It was gems or something or stones and you match them and it bursts and you had to make sure that you beat the level. Um, mm. I must have laid on my bed that day. I had my PS4 on thinking I was going to play my PS4 game, whatever it may have been, Uncharted, the original Uncharted or something, or my PS3 uh, Uncharted. 
And I sat there and played that game for like two hours <laughs> on my yeah. phone. And, and, and if anybody knows old iPhones, my battery was dead by the time I was yeah, done. Yeah, of course. But something about just sitting there and, and playing a puzzle-like game, mm. and to me it felt like a real gaming experience. I was just like, oh, wow, you know, this is cool. This is like my new handheld device. This is my new Game Boy. This is just something about it, you know, got me into it. Um, and then a few years later, I got ended up getting a an Android phone. Um, just because of, for different reasons, I was, you know, I wanted to try the Android, see how it was like. I heard the custom customizability was better and all that stuff. So I got that. And then at this point in time, a lot of mobile games have been released. Mm. But, but the first thing that I really got in, uh, got on when I played, got my Android was modern combat. Anybody familiar with modern combat? It's basically like a call of duty, um, for yeah. mobile devices. And um, back then, in that day, Modern Combat was a premium game. I think I paid 6 or $7 for, for this game. Yeah. Um, it was Modern Combat 2. And I played it. The storyline I thought was the most epic thing. The graphics look so awesome. If you go back and look at the graphics now, <laughs> they're nothing compared to what our devices <laughs> are capable of. But um, back then, I just thought, oh, man, I'm playing Call of Duty on my phone. You know, it was like the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so and, those and, are... and also the, the the screen was much smaller back then though. Yeah, so definitely. It's not even comparable, I think, uh, in terms of the the graphics. Of course, they looked worse, but you could also see less details. To be fair, that's that's on, a very good point. Thing. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, to the lens of that, I'm thinking, oh man, these are the best thing, best thing ever. Um, mm. But yeah, so those are some early examples of some games that I played on mobile that really got me into. Oh man, this can be a real dedicated gaming device. Over yeah. the years, I feel like that's changed with some free-to-play games. They feel like they're more quick and casual. Um, mm. But we still do have those those games out there that do give you that feeling of, oh, I'm playing a full-fledged type game on my phone, which is really cool. And I would love to see that, you know, be a trend again. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, go, going, back to, going back to Call of Duty, the new Call of Duty game, that truly feels like a Modern Warfare, you know, Modern Warfare 2, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 game just on mobile. And I think... You know, Fortnite releasing as well, PUBG yep, Mobile that's releasing. That's very true. Yep. Uh, we are we are seeing this trend of, of some PC games moving to mobile, and not in a um, not in a slimmed down, uh, boring mobile version mm -hmm. as it used to be back in the day. Yeah. But like a full fledged experience. Pretty much, yeah, fully fledged experience. Yeah. Um, but but my my experience, I, I played Modern Combat as well. By the way, <laughs> great game. I have fond memories of that as well. Yeah. I, I started back on a HTC Desire back in the day. Um, that was when Google launched their first. What was it called back then? Not the Pixel. You know, before that they called it Nexus, right? Oh, the yeah, first Nexus phone. The Nexus. That's right. They teamed yes. up with a company. That's right. Yep. I think that was in 2010, and I got so excited. I saw that announcement. Um, I saw a video of that announcement, and in Denmark you couldn't get that one, but you could get the HTC Desire, and the Nexus one was produced by HTC. It was basically the HTC Desire just with Google's branding instead. So I got the HTC Desire, and. The first game I remember playing, it wasn't the first one I downloaded, but the first one I truly remember was something called the Moron Test. The Moron Test Classic, uh, released in October 2010. You can't find it anymore, by the way, so I can't even, it doesn't help to leave a link to it anywhere. But you can go Google search it, though, and you can find an image of it. It, it was also a premium game. It cost a, a single US dollar, uh, a single US dollar, and it was basically a, a puzzle game. It showed, it showed me the power of mobile gaming because back then, I was one of the first people in my class to, to get a smartphone. And this game would just gather everyone around this tiny little screen to see you know, what the game was all about and see if they could complete it. Could complete it because it was it was it was just a frustrating game. There's a reason why it was called the Moron Test, basically. <laughs> it it would seem like the puzzles you had to do were so simple, so insanely simple. But you typically end up failing anyway because you didn't read the uh, the instructions properly, and the game tried to 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 fool you at any given point in time, which made it a perfect social game as well. It made it a perfect game to play with a friend, uh, especially because you you basically got to point a finger at them afterwards and just yell moron, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I I do miss I do miss uh, I do miss some of that. I don't think any of us ever completed the entire game, and I wish it was still available. But that was a great experience for me, and and as I said, it really showed me what mobile gaming could be. Right? It, it gathered everyone, even even people who didn't typically play games. Um, they would still they would still play this game. But then after having played that, I wanted to play something a bit more, you know, with more depth to it. So I found out that Glue, uh, the mobile game developer Glue, had released a Guitar Hero game, Guitar Hero 6. Oh, I forgot about that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they removed it wrong, long ago. It had horrible reviews, by the way. I don't know why I still bought it, but I did. 
I didn't own a console. I guess that was part of the reason. I didn't own a console, so I couldn't really play Guitar Hero. I, I, I played it at, you know, at friends, uh, friends' houses, but I couldn't play it myself. And I figured, hey, that's kind of cool. Maybe, maybe I can play it on my smartphone instead. It was not good. <laughs> There's a reason that game isn't available anymore. <laughs> but I mentioned it anyway, though, because that was that was the aforementioned bad experience that I've had with a premium game. And I guess I kind of burned my finger because after that, I started moving into into more free-to-play games, slowly transitioning to that instead. I, I did play Game Dev Story, though, by Kairosoft. Oh, I guess that's that, how you pronounce it. That one, it was good. I played the heck out of that game, too. Yeah. See, that was a great one. I played that every every single night before I'd go to bed. I was lying in bed, and I would play that game every night with yeah for months probably oh, it felt, <laughs> I it felt for a so long great time, at least. when you made like a yeah. like an awesome game that everybody bought and you're just like oh cool i'm a real game dev yes yeah exactly. that game, i remember that and then and then they made a bunch of right they made a bunch of different ones you know you know what was it yeah Restaurant they basically Story did a copy paste or, yeah they did yeah. a copy paste on it but but the original game dev i agree that game was awesome yeah that game was kind of cool but but i think actually looking back as i said the guitar hero game was probably the reason i meant went into free to play games instead because i was looking back at my at my google play order history and after after guitar hero 6 except for game dev story i nearly stopped buying premium games or at least it, it got down to maybe buying one premium game uh, on mobile every year or so even though i did play a lot of mobile games but i would only buy maybe one a year two a year or so yeah it died out I there i like Thank how you said you, i like how you said you burned your finger on it that was a good <laughs> that was a good play on <laughs> words I like that. Oh, yeah, that was a good play on words. Yeah, no, you did good yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course it was on purpose. I, yeah, I, of I course. planted that yeah. seed there for you to notice. I didn't yeah. realize that that glue even released a Guitar Hero. That's interesting. Yeah, they they does, did though. Does glue still make? They still make games, no? They still make games. Okay, yep. I haven't they... seen a bunch of their games recently. No, actually, Tencent invested in them, but I think Tencent just very recently left them again. I don't think they were, they're less, that successful anymore. Uh, I don't like the games Glue tend to make. They yeah. tend to have bad monetization, in my opinion. Uh, and the game design and the UI usually isn't that great either. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess it's a company that might be dying out, but I yeah. haven't looked into it for a while, though. I, I just... I, I just I'm on yeah. the website right now. It says the leader in 3D freemium mobile gaming. Are they well, the leader though? Are they? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> no, but, but uh, I remember they were really popular for for a while. Like they were like the forerunners for making premium mobile games for a while. There, they did a lot of um, what is it? Licensed games too for a while. I they remember. Did. I guess Guitar Hero need. being one of them. Yeah. I think around the same time where Singa, if you remember Singa, Singa really took off yeah, on Facebook, Zynga, right, yep. with Facebook games. Around the same time, I feel like Blue really started making headway on, on mobile instead. I, I at least in my head, those two companies um, started gaining in popularity around the same uh, around the same time. Um, yeah, and but then, I, it's in, yeah, it's interesting to see that that none of them are leaders anymore. Yeah, exactly. They, they're still That's out the there. Good point. They, yeah, they're yeah. not leading the industry like. Like you think, I think Zynga's latest game, I'm looking at it right now, Game of Thrones Slots Casino. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be go. playing, I will not be playing the Game of Thrones slot machine on my phone. Thank you very much. Nope. But, but Zynga was very popular with, what is it, Words with Friends and stuff like that as well. See, that was popular. That's Yeah. Weird. Yeah. But it's weird. Yeah. Like, I guess this kind of, kind of comes full circle with our, what is it, our throwback section right here, thinking of all the games. It's the developers, too, that we forget about that used to be, that used to lead the industry, I guess, let's say, mm. when it comes to these games that you don't see them, I guess, leading as much anymore. I mean, Zynga no. did what? Zynga did Farmville. I remember Farmville. Yeah, and I super, think they did one super called popular. Mafia, Mafia War, right? Mafia wasn't, wasn't War that... or something, yeah. yeah. One of those generic On names. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mafia but of I, Wars. Yeah, I remember yeah. I remember that being super popular on Facebook at least back in the day. Um obviously that's not mobile, but they did go on to make mobile games as well. Yeah, a lot of those Facebook games, yeah, ended up on mobile when when things mm. got really big, you know, when the mobile started yeah. taking off and whatnot. That's very so yeah, that that was that was just about it. I think for this episode, I think that that's a nice way to end it. We uh, we might return in the next episode, or we might wait, skip skip one episode, but then we will most likely return to this mobile gaming throwback. I, I really liked I it, and I really like it. Yeah, I, I would love yeah, to look history. back in more games. Yeah, exactly. Um, and on that note, if you guys have more recommendations, we did read all the comments, by the way. So we've taken note of every single recommendation and idea 
for new sections last time. If you have more recommendations or ideas, throw the matters. We'd, we'd love to love to read them. We need new ideas for the podcast as well. Not that we have any issue talking. I think we're close to, to an hour already for this for this second episode, but uh, we would love to get new ideas. E3 obviously took up a, a big part of this podcast uh, episode. And, uh, and also, by the way, if you're listening and you don't follow any of, uh, of us on YouTube, that's interesting. So please let us know if that's the case, that's interesting for us because this started out, uh, this podcast, just on YouTube. And now episode two, as you mentioned in the beginning, Nimble, we're um, nimble. They just called you nimble. <laughs> I, I could, could be nimble wow. and you can be tiny. I'm okay with that. <laughs> My personality is splitting here. Listen, what I was trying to say was it's kind of interesting because we're trying to distribute this uh, as tiny set. There you go. Uh, as tiny set. Uh, we're trying to distribute it on, on all of the apps out there, Spotify and, and what have you. So it would be kind of interesting to see, hear from some of you guys who, who may have just kind of stumbled into this podcast. Most definitely, yeah. And, and, and definitely subscribe to us if you guys haven't already. Um, I cover mobile gaming. Nimble covers mobile gaming. Uh, we each are uh, playing our different games. Sometimes we play the same games, but it's good to see our different thoughts on what we think about them and views mm. and all that good stuff. And then like Nimble like Nimble said, I'm going to call you Tiny. Like Tiny said, uh, <laughs> just leave a comment. I deserve that. Yeah, leave a comment below and, you know, leave it in the comment section or whatnot. Let us know anything else you guys want to hear or stuff like that. Or what's your thoughts? What are your guys' thoughts on Google Stadia? Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on the E3 announcements and all that mm, stuff? Absolutely. And, and hey, what did you... what? what got you guys into mobile gaming you know what's the very first mobile game you can recall it might not be the first game you played because obviously that's a harder one but yeah what, what's the one that got you like oh man mobile gaming is a thing mm -hmm. and i want to do it because yep. that's that's very interesting to me well i, I guess i guess that's the way for us to end it we want to thank everybody for listening and we will be doing another episode next month we will try not to make it be two months um <laughs> the goal is to have one out every month eventually if time permits we can have them out sooner but uh, we definitely want to keep this going for you folks so absolutely thank you thank you